Hey, Changemakers. Welcome back to Cause Doc Radio. I'm Allie Murphy with Engage for Good. It's September. You've probably seen back to school commercials on TV, heard school updates on the radio, and have seen store aisles that are littered with colorful school supplies. Back to school, or in some cases already in school, is in full effect. Yet heading back to school isn't just about getting kids the right notebooks and pencils. It's also about helping them get emotionally and mentally ready for the change and thinking about what their after-school activities will look like. After the especially trying year we've all had, that's no small feat. Boys and Girls Clubs of America, a sponsor of Engage for Good, is one organization that has been working in the space for years. In today's episode, I'm joined by Chad Royal Pasco, acting Senior Vice President of Resource Development at Boys and Girls Clubs of America, to talk about their back-to-school campaign and how they've built it into a successful annual fundraising platform. We talk about how the seasonal campaign began as a PR event seven years ago, how it's grown along the way, and what it means to BGCA and their corporate partners. Chad also shares stories of the decorated vans that drive across country and shares one stellar piece of advice for developing lasting corporate partnerships, which also happens to be a top tip that'll help you succeed in life. And with that, let's get started. Welcome to Cost Talk Radio. So excited to have you here. Thank you so much. Um, I'm happy to be here today um, with you, Allie. Chad's been on the podcast before, so he's an old hat at this, but we're going to dive into a new topic. So would you start off by giving us a brief overview of who you are and what you do at Boys and Girls Club of America? Sure. Um, And that has changed a lot, as you can imagine, over the course of the pandemic. Um, So my name is Chad Royal Pasco, and I'm the Acting Senior VP for Resource Development. Um, and I had really headed up um, just the Corporate and Cause Partnerships team as National mm-hmm. Vice President. And um, over the course of the last year, I assumed some additional responsibilities for alumni, for integrated direct marketing, for resource development, collaborative services, which is kind of our consulting arm that we work with the field on, um, and also with our writing and uh, thought leadership team. One of the things that we're, we're really here to talk about today is something that's exciting to me. It's the Boys and Girls Club Back to School Campaign. So for those of our listeners who aren't familiar, can you give us an overview of what this is? Um, I have been with the organization for eight and a half years now. And one of the things that I came into was um, we did a PR event that was related to back to school. And, you know, at, at, especially for us as Boys and Girls Club, the back to school time period is important because it's really the time when parents are making their plans about what are kids going to do for school, but also what are kids going to do after school. You know, Boys and Girls Club is predominantly an after-school program. Um, And so we really wanted to um, kind of capture this time period because it's it's a moment of consideration for parents and other caregivers to think about what is best for their kids as they start back to school. Think about after school as well, because we know that that school plus out of school equals a great future. Um, so our back to so our back to school um, started off as a PR event, which was really just a PR event. And um, when I started out, one of the things that um, that you know was one of my my items to do from the very beginning was to establish a cause period. Which for us, I you know I don't really know whether that is so valid because we're open all year all all long all all year long, and that we also have the ability to activate all year long. But I think that the back to school time period made sense for us for so many reasons, because our numbers are higher in the summer, and because parents are considering, you know, additional things as they go back to school. So we started to establish that time period as quote, unquote, quote, unquote, ours. It sounds like you started more on the PR side and then wanted to create something that was going to happen year over year. Is that right? Yeah, we wanted to create something that was year over year. And, you know, we are, we are not an organization that has a traditional month, shall we say. Um, and we don't have a ribbon color or any kind of thing like that. And it wasn't really something that we wanted to duplicate, right? Because that's what that's what other folks have and they're awesome at it. And so we, you know, we 
uh, centered in on this back to school time period. And we said, okay, so let's build a little bit more legs into this PR event that we specifically had and give our opportunities for many of our partners to come in. And whether they do fundraising campaigns around this time, awareness campaigns around this time, at some points, although we've kind of moved away from that to do supply drives during this time and kind of stuff the bus and things like that. Um, and then we also added elements to it. You know, we started off with a five-year plan for how to do this and we added elements to it. Um, such that um, one of the components, very, very, um, we're, we're excited to bring this back, hopefully post-pandemic. Um, is that we had vans crisscrossing the country. Um, oh my gosh! Were, um, yeah, that we're doing live remotes with our um, with our media partners and in selected markets, and they were doing, let's say, a, um, a supply drive at one particular company, and then all of the supplies that were collected in that van went to that particular location that was closest to them, um, and mm-hmm. all of those vans are wrapped and branded back to school um, for Boys and Girls Clubs of America, which is awesome. And then our clubs actually have, you know, they have, they're trying to get more members. They're trying to get other, you know, kind of um, other kind of measures. And so you could actually win the van. Um, and so Ooh. by the time that, yeah, so it's a big thing, you know, transportation is a very big thing for after school. Um, how do you get kids right. from school to after school? And so, um, we have some great partners, um, Toyota and Bridgestone and some other ones that were very early adopters within, um, the back to school space for us, which was awesome. And, um, and, uh, so they agreed to give vans. Um, and so, in essence, is that you could win that van and you also got service to that van. Um, and you also won things from our back to school partners in that van. So for example, is that you got a whole new computer um, room or you got um, jeans for every kid that comes to your club, or you got a new pair of tennis shoes for every kid that comes to your club, or you got a stuffed backpack for every kid that comes to your club. So yeah. it was pretty valuable. Um, for the, Mm -hmm. the, for those that won and, um, you know, we, we have done that for several years and during the time of, of, um, one of the big hurricanes is that we gave away over 50 vans that year, um, with our partners of Toyota and Bridgestone. So I'm sure you've learned a lot along the way since the campaign first started. What is something that worked well that you were surprised by? And maybe what's something that didn't work so well that you had to learn from? (laughs) Yeah, so I think so. I've got to put off my, um, I, I don't think that I'm an old person by any stretch of the imagination, or as I say, I might, some, I love that. Some, some profile that I have is that I say I act younger than I am, but I'm older than I look. Um, and so, so I think that's a good way to put it. Um, is that, okay. you know, when I went to school, it's like school went from Labor Day until Memorial Day, right? That was like a given. Mm-hmm. That's like kind of when to cover. So, the definition of back to school is like all over the map, according to all over the map. So depending upon whether you're in the North or the South or the West or the Midwest or the Southeast or whatever, your definition of back to school really changes. And so by the National Retail you know, Federation is that their definition is that basically it starts like at the point when school lets out up until the time when school starts again. So really, regardless of who that's for, regardless of who it's for, so people mm-hmm. are buying back to school all during the whole season. And so our, our thought process as to when back to school was changed. Um, and I think the other thing um, for us was really also, and I think that this is as we progressed along the seven years, is that what does it is to ask the question, what does it mean to be prepared to go back to school? And mm-hmm. that's more than notebooks. That's more than pencils. That's more than backpacks. Is that that's, that is, you know, being ready from an emotional standpoint, from a safety standpoint, or a feeling safe kind of standpoint. And especially then, how does that, how has that changed over the last couple of years in the pandemic? Is that because oh 
it's kind of like it, we 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 kind of now jokingly say back to school suddenly seems like an evergreen campaign because mm-hmm. <laughs> we're going to school, we're not going back to school. We're going to school, we're not going back to school. So I think some like, are going to school, some are not. Some are going to school. It's an A B schedule. It's a, like every yep. Thursday, and then all of a sudden, you know, there is unfortunately a case of you know potential COVID, and the school closes down for two weeks, you know, et cetera. So I think it has just become so very very different as far as what we consider that to be um, and what we do. Um, and, and we have, you know, a wide range of partners that have partnered with us. And I think that that has really kind of taken off and is a true testament to also from a nonprofit standpoint, when you're creating a campaign or a platform or a moment, I think is that you have to be flexible within that and not be so rigid as to say okay. this is platinum level, gold level, silver level, whatever. Um, and you know, we've we've had significant conversations with each one of our partners and feel like those uniquely bring something to that, you know, effort every single year. Um, and they're not all the same. So let's let's dive into partners a little sure. bit more. So I understand you have you've had over a hundred corporate partners and have raised more than thirty million since twenty sixteen. You talked a little bit already about what back to school time period means for you. How does that translate into corporate partners supporting this endeavor? Yeah. So let me preface it first of all by saying that we've had over a hundred corporate partners total from Boys and Girls Clubs perspective. In general, mm-hmm. our portfolio is normally around seventy five. Um, okay. So so we've we've definitely multiplied it. We've more than quadrupled our income um, for for the most part over the course of that period of time of eight and a half years that I've been here. And within mm-hmm. back to school is that we've gone from three or four um, at one time and now to this year have 27. Um, and so that accounts for out of our cause marketing, which is about 40% um, out of that amount is that um, back to school is about a third to 40% of that, depending upon what year it is. This particular year in 2021, I have to keep reminding myself what year it is. Um, Me too. So, <laughs> so in 2021, is that we had 27 partners that partnered with, recognized, ran promotions during the back to school time period, which we dis- which we defined as um, the beginning of July through the very beginning week of September um, this year. Okay. So we normally kind of so still in progress. It's still in progress. So there's still time to go out and donate. Um, and yes. the still time to get involved um, is that there is um, that time period and we normally end it right about after Labor Day. Um, so, you know, depending upon when we start, we normally start sometime a little bit after July 4th and end a little bit after Labor Day. So what keeps your corporate partners coming back to be a part of this? Yeah, I think it goes back to a fundamental part of not not even what's fundamental to... Um, not fundamental to back to school, but what's fundamental to a partnership. And that is that if you build a partnership that is based upon shared values and a shared understanding of what's important to one another, then you're good. And that's what's going to keep somebody coming back over and over again. In addition to that, and this is a lesson that I learned long ago in my neophyte days of being within this industry (laughs) is that a a lesson that was taught to me very early on was that anybody can come to you as a cause and they can be very, very motivated by your cause. But it doesn't matter how motivated somebody is by your cause or by your mission is that it really all depends upon how you're treated when you're there. So it does Mm -hmm. matter about, you know, your staff folks, you know, your account managers and your quote unquote salespeople. Although I know that that's a dirty word of folks kind of saying that like, no, they're fundraising directors. And I was like, but anybody that has held this job understands that it's it's absolutely a sales job. Um, and, you know, but at the same time, it's a, it's a sales job, I would say, with a heart. Um, sometimes I know that there's many other ones uh, with that. But um, I would say that that's, that that's really what it is, is that, you know, it's, it's taking the time to listen to folks and understand what their objectives are, and then to be upfront and honest about whether you can meet those. Um, mm-hmm. you know, there have been other times when we're like, we can't do that. Like, it would be great. I would love it if we could. But I just need to be honest with you and just say that we cannot. And so... 
And that's important. Yeah. And and you do because all you're going to end up with is an unhappy partner. And you want to build that relationship in a way that it's going to continue year over year. So you've got to have that trust to start with too. Right. Aside from right fit, of course. Right. Because I think that, you know, and, and when you do that, and I think that when you have the ability to step back from that and the professionalism to step back from that is that what you actually end up with is sometimes, so the person that you're talking to then may go on to be the head of corporate social responsibility at another company, right? So now all of a sudden it fits within their new CSR platform. Mm -hmm. And they do remember the way that they were treated. And they do remember that you had the ability to walk away from that or that you were upfront and honest about that. And that really, that's really what we all should aspire to. And not just related to partnerships, but probably in every single one of our interactions. (laughs) Yes, in In life. life. Okay, so employee engagement is a question that we get a lot. Is there an employee engagement component of this campaign, whether it's with some or probably not all of your partners? Yeah, so I would tell you that there is. um, It has looked different over the last couple of years. And I think that Mm -hmm. one of the reasons why we had the vans was we wanted there to be that opportunity to have that employee engaged. And so let's just say, for example, that we were, um, and I use it as an example because it wasn't an actual example. Um, So (laughs) for Lenovo, um, is that with Lenovo, like we had a band that went to the Lenovo headquarters. There were emails that went out ahead of time that the the company CEO said something as well, um, you know, and, and that they said, you know, on this and this day, Boys and Girls Clubs of America is going to be here with their back to school van. We're going to stuff that van full of, you know, materials. And, you know, they had a list um, of things Mm -hmm. they would go from. And so you gave the opportunities um, for employees to really engage at their level. So they could go down and make a donation. They could go down and give, you know, a pack of notebooks, or they could say like, hey, we're going, you know, I really have some extra time. And during the school year, I have the time to mentor someone at the club, or I have the time to um, do a do a back to school party. We have another example. Um, and, and in, um, I believe that I'm getting the state right. So I apologize if I'm not getting the state <laughs> right. Um, in Alabama, they, di- they do a statewide report card party. And so, okay. and so like that kind of thing. So there's plenty of opportunities. I think it's one of the great things just about Boys and Girls Club in general is that there are opportunities for folks to get engaged at the level and to the extent that they want to get engaged at. And so, you know, in many of our partners, if you take a look at it from Comcast or Microsoft or Verizon or Cox or, you know, um, U.S. Cellular or Old Navy is that almost all, you know, Kohl's and Ross is that almost any of them, they've done a back to school supply drive. And then, you know, they love to go then and then take those supplies to that local club and see Mm -hmm. kids get wide eyed with like, oh my God, I have a new backpack and I've got glitter pencils and like God only knows what else, right? Um, So I can only imagine the excitement (laughs) when that stuff gets unpacked. Like you, and and employees get to see that come full circle. There's lots of screaming and running around and, and all of that kind yeah. of stuff. As, as they're like, oh my God, I want that backpack. So yes, there is. It's 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 a cool thing. So this is a national campaign. Yes. But obviously you have local clubs as well. So you've talked about this a little bit, but how does it show up at the local level and how do you engage those local clubs? So this is something that like, and for all those local clubs that are going to listen to this, like hear me, hear my words directly. So in 2019, so I think that this is something that now that it has become a larger campaign, you know, that we're kind of known for within Boys and Girls Clubs of America. In 2019, we went to our regional leadership conferences and we asked um, at the regional leadership conferences for club organizations to step forward um, in a pilot that we were calling local cause marketing. So if you think about it from a national perspective, is that I have got my eye on um, uh, Family Dollar, on Buffalo Wild Wings, on Coca-Cola, on Old Navy, on CBS Health, on Forever 21, on, you know, those kinds of things like that are larger chains, right? Right. And so that are, are larger entities or whatever you want to call that. And so... In that particular case is that that's how we work from a national organization, 
But at the local level, there are tons of businesses that are not going to appear anywhere on kind of my prospect list, but yet there are folks Mm -hmm. that can actually participate in that campaign as well. And so when, when we spoke to folks in the fall of 2019, we asked for volunteers to pilot local cause marketing by using nationally produced or nationally kind of kind of templated materials and, you know, all of those kinds of things to tie into this back to school campaign. We also would give the options for evergreen campaigns and a couple of other things as well and and Mm -hmm. holiday and things like that. And, you know, the, the response was really overwhelming, um, which was great. And we were ready to start that. And then all of a sudden, this thing happened in 2020. <laughs> this thing? <laughs> I'm referring to it as this thing now. Um, okay, it got it. Refuse to acknowledge more than that as we're going to get through it and we're going to get through it. Um, and so we had to take a step back, you know, as many organizations did and, and say, we're going to focus down on our core and we're going to focus down on what we do. And, and this, you know, was something that, that was getting kicked off the ground and, and clubs were really focused on what they needed to essentially do for their youth and their families and their kids, um, and in their communities. And so local cause marketing was not necessarily one of them. And I will say this though, there are many club organizations that do amazing local cause marketing. Because the stories that we heard when we were even in the regions were unbelievable. And so the creativity, I know that we will see eventually will be unbelievable. Um, So, you know, we hopefully are going to... And I'm going to knock on wood, even as I say that. um, We hopefully will bring that back in 2022 and be able to, you know, really come up with that robust campaign that is now hit in a major way on a national perspective, bring back the physical vans, bring back the live remotes, and then bring bring into kind of existence that local cause marketing aspect and kind of join all those together into this giant super campaign, right? Um, and that will be a dream come true. I know personally for me, and I know for many, many people that are on the team and, and within the organization. Well, uh, I'm really excited to see what you all accomplish <laughs> when this thing comes to an end. Exactly, exactly. We are close to our time here. What would your top tip be for another organization that maybe doesn't have a day or doesn't have a month, but is looking to do more of a seasonal period like you? What would your top tip be to them? I think look deep down, before, you know, because just as I was tasked when I came in with what, which was, what is your ribbon? Like, what is your month? What is your this? What is your that? Look to find out what you have right now before you start going off on some wild tear to create all these things. And I think um, you have to do that first. And I think come up with something that is truly authentic and resonant Mm -hmm. and honest with your brand and something that somebody, somebody looking at it says, this makes sense to me. Um, Because if they look at something and it doesn't make sense, and I'm not going to give any examples, although 50 come to mind, um, is that, you know, things that just didn't, didn't make sense. And you're like, okay, that was a miss. Um, And so, Mm -hmm. you know, you think of those and, and, and I think you've got to look at something, what is authentic and resonant and honest within your brand, because that is going to be what truly resonates with somebody and what truly resonates with your partners. And that as a staff person, that you can explain to a partner and they're like, yes, I get it. I'm on board mm-hmm. with you. I've got your vision. Here's what I can do with it. And then the other thing is to make it not so prescriptive to say, you're buying in at this level, you're buying in at this level, you're buying in at this level Mm -hmm. and make it so prescriptive that I just feel like I'm buying into something and that I have no hand in it whatsoever. So with that, it's about time to come to a close. Where can our listeners learn more about Boys and Girls Clubs of America online and back to school if they'd like to do that? Sure. So your quickest way is to go online to bgca.org and that will be where you can pretty much find anything. Um, and you'll probably find at least right now um, some some splash pages for back to school and some other things that we do and find out how to get involved um, or um, go under partnerships. But bgca.org is definitely going to be where you find it. 
Awesome. And just in case anybody's forgotten by this point, we're still in back to school period until what, first week of September is what you said? Officially, yes, until the first week of September. Um, until September 7th is technically when our campaign quote unquote ends. But I will tell you is that we also do provide that latitude that it's like, that's our kind of core time period. But there are some campaigns that go beyond. There are some campaigns that start before the official time period ends again. You need to have flexibility. Yes. And actually, you'll have to, for listeners, they'll have to look at the other ones because this will release, even though we're recording today, a little bit after that. Right. Exactly. What is your favorite thing about working at BGCA? I'll tell you, I actually, um, from, from the very first time that I went and took a tour of a club, I have a picture of a piece of artwork that is from um, a club in Los Angeles that really struck a note with me and has really struck a chord. And really, I go back to over and over again. Um, I have it on my phone. I have it on, I've had it on my phone. I have it on my computer. And um, it was, you know, it was an amazing piece of artwork just to begin with. But mm-hmm. But what struck me about it was you know, unfortunately, it's not really, um, it, it, it's just this piece of artwork with what this child is dealing with, you know, in their area, and which is not awesome. And, you know, our job at Boys and Girls Clubs of America is to create a great future for everybody, right? Perfect. Regardless of the zip code they, they came from, the background that they came from, the opportunity that they came from. And I think that really it's going back to, I will never meet the person that created this piece of artwork, but I know that what I do and what my team does and what everybody does here affects millions of people and affects millions of people that I will never meet who will never get the opportunity to me to say thank you. And that is totally okay because I feel better just because I've had that impact. I think that's a great note to end on. So (laughs) Chad, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much and have a great day. Cause Talk Radio is brought to you by Engage for Good and is a production of True Story FM. Engineering by Pete Wright. Music in today's episode by Vortex and Rex Banner. If your podcast app supports ratings and reviews, please consider leaving your five-star review for this show. Thank you.